Hey. Welcome back to the show. It's Anti-War Radio. All right, now, Sheldon Richmond is the editor of The Freeman. What's that? That's the journal of the Foundation for Economic Education. And he's also a fellow at the Future Freedom Foundation. He's the keeper of the blog, Free Association, at sheldonfreeassociation.blogspot.com. And he also is a good friend of me and this show. Welcome back to the show. How are you doing, Sheldon? I'm doing great, Scott. Thanks for having me back. All right. I'm very happy to have you here, and uh, especially uh, during these uh, very momentous times uh, in the uh, state of relations between America and Israel and Palestine and all of the other politicians in the world and whoever else uh, about the uh, upcoming, perhaps, declaration of Palestinian statehood or an attempt to get one through the Security Council or the General Assembly. I guess the decision still hasn't officially been made one way or the other yet, as far as I know. Uh, and I'm sure that since your top essay today at your blog, Free Association, uh, is concerning Lysander Spooner and uh, his refutation of the authority of the U.S. Constitution, that um, you're going to have a different point of view on this question than most of what I've been able to hear on TV anyway. So why don't you go ahead and let it rip. Maybe first give people the necessary background that you think is important. Well, sure. And let me stress right at the top, uh, just to take all precautions, I, I am speaking only for myself, uh, uh, not for any organization. So uh, I just thought I should put that out there. Uh, well, oh, this come is on. A, like any of your organizations are afraid of what you got to say. This is, well, this is a long, You're complicated... You're star, and for this reason. This is a long and complicated conflict, and... Uh, and there's many sensitive issues involved, and I and I approach it, you know, I try to approach it with great care. Uh, but, you know, I don't, I, I won't retell the whole story because it would take a, it would take a, a long time. But what what currently is happening is that, uh, you know, in 1967, which let's keep in mind was, um, you know, about 44 years ago, so it's not some short time ago. Uh, it's a couple generations. Um, the parts of Palestine, which was one time a colony, basically, of Great Britain after World War I, uh, the parts that were supposed to be a Palestinian Arab state um, were not allowed to become so uh, because, and uh, because, and this is uh, this is not widely known, but it's 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 very heavily documented. There are books about this, and it's not terribly controversial among historians and scholars. But because uh, what was soon to become the state of Israel. And the king of Jordan, or what was known back then as Transjordan, he, he also was King Abdullah, the current king of Jordan is King Abdullah, um, they colluded to deprive the Palestinian Arabs of their own state. And, and so in 1948, when Israel declared independence, after the United Nations uh, partitioned, in other words, divided uh, Palestine into a uh, uh, what was going to be a Jewish state and a, a Palestinian Arab state. Uh, there was a war after Israel declared its independence. Actually, it kind of started before that. Uh, and during that time, the Jordanian forces and the Arab Legion, actually, which was commanded by the King of uh, Jordan, uh, occupied the West Bank uh, and Egypt um, and took the Gaza Strip. <clears throat> so the UN's uh, wishes were defied in 1948 the pal because the Palestinian Arabs did not get the state they were supposed to get. So that's that's where it stands. In in 1967, uh, Israel uh, went to war with uh, neighbor, with its neighbors, and we could get into the controversy who started that war. I don't believe the standard uh, version is, is uh, accurate, but uh, Israel was not an innocent victim in that. But Israel then seized the West Bank and Gaza from Jordan and, and Egypt, respect, uh, respectively, and has held those areas ever since. They're known as the occupied territories. Uh, in the 1970s or early 80s, the, the, the Palestinians' uh, uh, leadership, uh, Arafat, um, basically renounced any claim to uh, the, the Jewish part of the partition, in other words, about 78% of uh, of, of Palestine and said we would just we'll, we would we'll take our state on the remaining 22 percent, which is the West Bank and Gaza. And that's a long-standing renunciation of of the entire area of Palestine. 
And uh, so, as we all know, there have been negotiations on and off, but, but never any progress. But meanwhile, and this is the key thing, Israel has been basically annexing the area, areas in the West Bank by building huge settlements, which have uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of, uh, of um, Israeli Jews living now in the West Bank. In, and when they call them settlements, you think, you know, you picture a kind of tents. No, these are towns. These are towns with buildings, permanent buildings, what they call facts on the ground, uh, so that they won't be undone. And they've been building this wall, of course, also snaking through the West Bank, separating uh, people from their farms and, and, and wrecking, uh, uh, you know, homes and villages. And, uh, and so this is where we, we now stand. So the Palestinians, uh, perhaps inspired by uh, the Arab Spring, I don't know in particular what did this, decided to uh, this year go to the U.N. and say, what, you know, negotiations aren't getting anywhere, uh, so why don't you recognize the Palestinian state, which was supposed to be created in 1948 anyway. And so that's where we now stand. Uh, all right. And so, I, I'll, let, I'll let you get a question in. <laughs> all right. Well, now, um, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you my best understanding of the current situation. You correct me if I'm wrong or elaborate from there, whatever you think is best. Uh, the Palestinians could submit this to the General Assembly where they're guaranteed to win, and but then what? Uh, and then on the other hand, they can submit it to the Security Council where they know Barack Obama will veto it. Uh, and then whatever consequences come later, at least they can say, well, it's your fault for vetoing it, America, in that case. But uh, elaborate on, on the different choices there and, and why they matter so much. And if they do declare a state, doesn't that mean that they're just going to have a war real soon again and that the okay. Palestinians will lose oh. it terribly? All, all good questions. Um, I believe, and I'm, I'm not a tech, you know, expert on the technicalities of the UN, but I believe if they just go the uh, the uh, General Assembly route, it's not and, and win recognition there, where the UN, where the US, of course, doesn't have a veto, uh, and they need, I think, two thirds. Um, I don't believe it, it it counts as full recognition. I don't think they get all of the prerogatives that a UN member gets. They get mm -hmm. some access, I believe, to some of the agencies and stuff but it's not it's an inferior form of status inferior status right so i can see why uh, the advantages of, of their going to the security council but as you note the u.s of course holds a veto now wait so in the security council it would be a different bid entirely it would be for full member statehood right and i i think if it gets through this if it were to get through the security council then it would be a recommendation to the to the uh, general assembly and then there'd be the vote there, so there would end up still being two votes. So I mean, there's still the General Assembly still ultimately would mm -hmm. would but, would vote, but it but would if probably they take the ratified. Security Council route, that would, leads to the more official position. Right, right, and that that means they're a real member, they're a, a complete member because the Security Council. Look, when the when the five original members set up the, uh, you know, uh, which included what um, Russia, Stalin's Russia, when they set up the the UN. Uh, I mean, the whole thing's tainted because it's it's the UN. It was the victors from World War II. But but leave we'll waive all that for now. Um, the the main powers that set up the UN wanted to make sure that they would have ultimate say over who was recognized as a, as a state in uh, in in the UN. So that's why the rule the rules are the way they are. All right, now hold it right there. You know we got to okay. go out to this break. It's Sheldon Richmond from the Future Freedom Foundation and Sheldon, freeassociation.blogspot.com. We'll be right back after this. All right, Joe, welcome back to the show. It's Anti-War Radio. Scott Horton, I'm talking with Sheldon Richmond. And um, I guess before we get to what you think ought to be done, Sheldon, uh, I want to ask you about what you think the consequences will be of what seems like the most likely thing, which is that they're going to submit it to the U.N. Security Council and then lose. Well, I, it's hard to say. I'm almost uh, almost speechless. Um, here's the thing, and, and here's one way to cut through it. I think uh, they're the, the really may. I mean, Israel and, and the and the American uh, and the U.S. Uh, administration, Obama administration, and the Israel lobby, and uh, everybody who's uh, on uh, you know staunchly on Israel's side on this issue, is I think they're really mad at the Palestinians for putting Obama in this embarrassing situation. Oh, you know, oh, everybody say, oh, poor Ob Obama. Uh, but, you know, tough luck. Uh, I think the Palestinians are doing the right thing. I mean, 
Obama keeps saying, you know, this is not a path to peace. There's no shortcut to peace. This is what he said in the speech today. But the point is, this is not designed initially, immediately to achieve peace. That's, that's the next step. This is designed to get recognition as a state, and then they can go on and go, if Israel is interested, which would be a first, really, uh, it can go on to negotiate with Israel. Now, this doesn't preclude negotiations. I don't know why they keep saying uh, this is not the way to do it. We should negotiate. First of all, they've been uh, negotiating on and off for nearly 44 years. And, you know, somebody compared it to two people negotiating over a pizza. But while one guy's negotiating, the other guy's eating the pizza. That's what's going on here. So how long can well, they it's wait? it's more they like wait? the hostage negotiating with the hostage taker. And there is well, nobody on the phone outside, you know. Right, right. But, the, of course, the pizza consumption idea is, is a reference to the settlement building. Where, sure. You know, they're building towns all, you know, through the, through the West Bank. Eventually, there'll be a little sliver left, and they'll say, okay, well, let's negotiate over this sliver. So, uh, you know, people say, why do this? What's the point of doing this? It won't change anything. Well, psychologically, it would change something if Palestine's recognized as a state. Because now, suddenly, you have one member state occupying another member state. I think that's a psychological boost for the Palestinians that they need. Uh, what would happen? I mean, I don't know what will happen. I hope there's not violence. The, 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 violence is not the way for the, for the Palestinians to get what it is they want. And, uh, you know, I hope they realize that. But that's got nothing to do with getting this recognition. This is a psychological boost that would, they would need and would be constructive. The only, the only way you can believe it's not constructive is if you think Netanyahu is a, is a good faith uh, negotiator, and he's not, or that the, U, the U.S. is a, uh, an honest broker, which it is not. How can you look at the 44 years, or actually, you know, the 62 years or whatever, 63 years of U.S. Uh, conduct in the, in the Middle East and, and then on this uh, particular conflict and think it's an honest broker? It just, it just is not. Yeah, well, and back to my analogy, it's America's the negotiator on the phone outside, and they're on the side of the bank robbers. Well, well, that's right. And, and for, for Obama to go to the U.N., I mean, if you read the speech, read the section of the speech about this, it's just a joke. I mean, he, look, I think he was trying out to be a stand-up comic. Uh, before, before he even got to the Palestinian section of the speech, he, ma he made the claim that the war is receding in the world. And, you know, after I got off the floor from laughing, uh, I realized what a, you know, what is, what is going on there? How can, and, and why weren't people, like, rolling in the aisles at, this, at the General Assembly when he said that? Where is war receding? We're just setting up a new, a new drone base in Africa so we can uh, be more convenient to hit Somalia and uh, possibly even Ethiopia and Yemen. So, what, you know, <laughs> you've got to turn the whole thing upside down. It's bizarro world, as I guess as Justin, as Justin Raimondo would say. Yeah, American uh, wars just don't count. Everywhere else, peace is, bre right. is breaking out. You know? and, on, and in this speech where he's discussing the Palestinians, he, he goes through about the, the suffering of the Israelis. That they're, you know, that the rockets are fired, and uh, you know all this, and of course th that's been true. Uh, Palestinian, uh, 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 Palestinians have killed uh, uh, Israeli civilians, and uh, uh, it's been, it's been, uh, you know, that's terrible, and it's, it's, uh, it's war crime. I don't know if it counts as a war crime because they're, they're not a state, and uh, you know, and they're, they don't really have the arms that uh, Israel has. But if you, but he said nothing about Israel, uh, Palestinian casualties, Palestinian repression. Or even the daily humiliation of being under Israel's thumb in those territories where there are checkpoints everywhere. You don't know when you're going to be able to get to work because you don't know how long you're going to be held up at all the checkpoints before you get from home to wherever it is you're working. I mean, this is a daily grind, not, even, not to mention the violence, but a daily grind. He made no mention of that. He just said, oh, I know you're frustrated, but this isn't the way to do it. Do it through negotiations. But look what's been happening over the last 40 years regarding negotiations. I mean, who could blame them for going to the U.N. to finally at least get this recognition? Right. Yeah, well, but uh, then again, I thought you were an anarchist. Don't you think they should just all stop well, yeah. acknowledging any states at all? <laughs> I'm no fan of the U.N., which I've already made clear, and it's true. I'm no fan of states, but... But you know they're not libertarians, and uh, and and they don't you know they're living in the they have to live in the world as they find it, and I don't bl I don't blame them. And in a world of states where they're under the thumb of another state, I don't blame them for doing this. Uh, I would hope that it's, you know the day after they get recognized as a state, they all start reading Lysander Spooner and say we change it. We don't want a state. We just want to be a a free a, fr a free uh, you know classical liberal individualist free market anarchist area. How about that? Uh, but but I don't, I don't look. I don't blame them for what they're doing. This is this is how you cope in the, in this situation. 
Yeah. Uh, well, and, you know, Netanyahu seems desperate to try to head it off and make it seem like it's the most unreasonable thing in the world, which I guess is right. just for the American audience, because pretty much everybody else on Earth is for this. Is that about the way you right. see it? Right. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. And, uh, and you, he's saying, no, let's start brand new negotiations right now instead of you doing this. Well, well, what's he been waiting for, you know, this whole time? That's, that's right. That's right. You've got to understand that the Israeli leaders are not bargaining in good faith. And I think we have to put extra focus on Obama, because I think what he's doing is totally disgraceful. Look, he doesn't want, this is the interesting thing, this is why this is such an interesting conflict. Um, in a sense, he doesn't want to uh, cast a veto in the Security Council, because he needs to claim he's on the side of the Arab Spring, right? Of the, of the aspirations of the Arab people for freedom and democracy and all that stuff. So he doesn't, he doesn't really want to do it for that reason. However, he, he knows politically, and also I think he means it, he wants to stay. He believes in standing with Israel no matter what. So he's got these two things. He's got to cast it if it gets to that point, but he doesn't want it to get to that point. So you know what he's doing? He's trying desperately to get Security Council members, should it go to the Security Council, to not vote. So you need, I think it is, nine votes. If they, if they get nine votes, the, the U.S. will have to cast its veto. If they only get eight votes or less, it doesn't have to cast a veto because it fails. Mm. So he needs to buy off or at least or threaten other members of the Security Council to keep them to, from uh, from casting what would end up being the nine votes, and he's 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 already uh, there have been reports that he's threatening to withhold aid not only to uh, Security Council countries but even uh, General Assembly countries if they vote for statehood. This is despicable. He wants he's two faced. He's trying to play it both ways. He doesn't want to have to cast a veto, but he knows he will cast a veto if he if it comes to that. And so he's trying to find this other way, slow walking it, they call it. I, that's an expression I've been hearing all week from, what's her name, Andrea Mitchell, you know, NBC's chief uh, diplomatic stenographer. Mm -hmm. Slow walking it. Don't let it get there. Let them file their petition and then just, oh, we lost it. Sorry, you know, five years later. Oh, you, what was that again? Oh, it must be under this pile of paper somewhere. It's wow. a trick. It's a, to it's a trick, and Obama should be ashamed of himself. Well, I'm sorry we don't have time. I was going to ask you about uh, Hamas's role in this from over there in the Gaza Strip prison, but I guess we'll have to save that for another time, maybe even tomorrow. Uh, but we got to go. Thanks very much, Sheldon Richmond. Appreciate it. Anytime, Scott. Thanks to you. All right, everybody. Uh, SheldonFreeAssociation.com.blogspot.com.